Welcome to Decker Tech. Today we're going to go over one of my previous runs. This was a top scoring run. Uh, it is a team composition built around Sylvie. Uh, I will get into all the details of the starting deck, uh, the Act 2 and Act 4 decks, as well as show you combat uh, for actually one of the hardest combats of the, uh, of the run, which was in Act 2 somewhere. And uh, we'll get through all that. Uh, first, I would like to kind of show you these... Uh, these end deck lists, we're not really going to go over them. We will go over the Act 4 in town deck list because that's the last point you really have any control over your deck. And we'll talk about the decision points throughout. But as you can see, these be the deck. The items were not so hot overall. Very quick rundown of these so you can take a, take a look if you want to pause and take a look at these screenshots of what all was involved in this. And uh, yeah, if you like this kind of content... And if you like the work I do here, please, uh, the best way to uh, to help support it is to share this video and this channel in general. Also to give me uh, feedback on, on what you liked and what you'd like to see in the future. Almost done with all these little pictures here. Like I said, we'll go over all the details here later. I just figured this was a good place to start. So you did have access to what the final decks were. Uh, very high scoring run. I even died a couple times. And uh, yeah. Let's get to the combat. So there is, I'd like to show you just kind of the general gameplay pattern, general play powder pattern throughout the game. There's basically two phases to any uh, high madness run right now. There's not Archon, and then there's Archon. So this gives you an idea of all the not Archon fights. This is one of the hardest ones because Ironclad. They have a plus 15 base resist and they all start with reinforced. So they're taking, they have plus 45% resistances, which means I won't be able to kill them in the first round of combat like I do every other fight in this game. Uh, so they're going to go to round two. I'm still going to be able to get excellent unless I bugger this somehow. I, I did a couple practice swings just to make sure I wasn't rusty here and I, I remembered all the steps, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, in general, Magnus is here to slow the enemy team and pull, apply vulnerable to them. Bree here is to make sure that Sylvie starts with as much powerful as she needs and then to also do some spot debuffs on the enemies uh, with Sight and Vulnerable as well. Both of them are going to be using Helping Hands to their fullest to give uh, Sylvie a starting hand of 10 cards on her first turn. Gustav here is to uh, keep the team healthy if for some reason we take damage, like say the enemies get a turn once. And then to uh, mainly apply Sharp to Sylvie for her first turn because the goal is by Sylvie's first turn I want uh, by the end of it I want all the enemies dead every single time like I said this is one of the hardest ones because uh, they have a lot of resistances 92% piercing resist 95% resist and they're this pretty beefy boys here they got 370 hit points so this is only act two this is the very first combat coming out of town so my items aren't great I don't have lava crystal I don't have all sorts of things and uh, yeah let's just get into the gameplay so for Bree uh, I would like to draw cards first. I have no cards to draw, so I will now go through and do Powerful. I have four energy, so I can do all but one. Battle Shout is, and Standard Bear are the priorities because they do Powerful, so I'll do them first. Next, I'll have one Intimidate and two Helping Hands. All Helping Hands are going to go to Sylvie, unless for some reason she's capped. So I've got four Inspire on her, so uh, one more Helping Hand, and then uh, that's all she needs. Now, for Resistances, the big big key thing for both Magnus and Bree here is I want to get all these guys to about the same resistances. I want the front guy or the, the sorry, the, the elite in the group, the one with the most hit points, to have the, the lowest resistance so that when Sylvie does an AoE attack, they all die at the same time or take even amounts of damage. Uh, in this case, these front two guys have massive amounts more. Uh, I'm pretty sure Magnus has a high chance of bombarding this front guy, so I'm going to do the second guy. Because Magnus, in his deck, has a target front attack with Vulnerable. And this is one of the hardest fights also because that guy went faster than... Uh, I, like, I didn't get any speed buffs on Bree. And he went fast enough and sped some else up. So that's that's the last time they uh, they scare me, really. Um, for Magnus, why is my game frozen? Hello, game. Did I encounter a bug? That was weird. Okay, um... Piercing Howl is the priority. That's AoE Vulnerable. I'm trying to get to 12 stacks of Vulnerable on everyone. And then I've got three energy left. I've got uh, something with Vulnerable, something with Vulnerable. Yes, please. I don't really need protection right now. And I'm trying to get these even. So here, 
Uh, Sylvie has something that reduces their resistance by 20%. So I'm actually going to put this on this front guy. Since I'm not going to cap him on vulnerable, he is the medius target. And I can Sylvie can put her, her debuff on this, this second guy here. And then helping hands, she's capped out on 5 inspire. So this other one goes to Gustav, even though he's not really going to make much use of. First thing to do on anyone's turn is draw. If I didn't have, so I have a deflect and a setup, so I know I can get to the bottom of my deck. If I didn't know, if I didn't think I could, I would trace first and make it so that I would make sure I get the setup and I can dig to the bottom of my deck and get all the cards. Because right now in my deck, I need these two chance of accuracy. And I actually need the shiv because this enemy right here has evasion. So uh, in the deck, I need to get to the two chance and the shiv. I have enough card draw to do that. So deflect. Vigilance. I actually should do the other Vigilance if I'm going to cast it, but since it costs energy, I do it last. Uh, and then Tune Up, I mean, Setup gets all those, so bam, bam, bam. Oops, I screwed that up, didn't I? It's fine, it's fine. Did I screw that up? So I had too many cards in my hand. I was supposed to trace first. This is what I get for talking and playing at the same time. I am so bad at this. So let's check, let's see what's in here. So I missed the ship. So technically, I should restart because I did a misplay and I knew it. I was supposed to trace Sylvie first. Uh, I want all of these. Trace her first so I had enough cards to draw three on the setup. And that shiv is on the bottom of my deck and I'm supposed to have it in my hand right now. But I buggered that. It's fine. It's not going to make a big enough deal for me to care. Uh, technically, I should melod melodic rhythm first. To heal my team up. I still need this vigilance. Which isn't going to draw me anything useful. And there's one evasion. There should be one less evasion on this back enemy. But I buggered that because... That shiv is still in the deck. Sylvie, I'm trying to draw an adrenaline and a camouflage. Because my plan is 5 energy plus an adrenaline is 5, 6, 7. So volley and 2 camouflages is going to be the best option. This is that uh, target shooting I mentioned, so that goes here. Sharp goes on myself. And I'm trying to manage this energy. I have... One draw, two draws. And I know I can get there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this one first because this gets me deeper in the deck. I'm going to spend a shot on the stealth. I'm going to spend the stealth that I have. And now I have three cards left in the deck. Setup digs three deep. I found everything I wanted. I have four, five, six energy. So that's camouflage and a volley. So these two go back. Camouflage. Volley. This chick would be a lot lower. And then some quick shots. Oh. Bam. I got two of them. So, two out of four on the hardest fight in the entire run other than Archon. And uh, as long as I don't die, I've succeeded and I will not be in danger anymore. And that's basically the gameplay. There's a lot of uh, items and setup here that are trying to just optimize those roles of... Uh, I don't even need any of this. Of... Eva, not evasion of vulnerable and mark and sight and such like that. Do, 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 do. Let me just finish this fight. I could just resign, but I want to show you the whole thing. Make sure, you know, I don't. So, I mean, sure, I can heal her up. That's great. That was wonderful. I can speed her up. She just this, this one card by itself, melodic rhythm, is just. Oh, so powerful. Four times seven. That's 30% of your team's health for, for one energy. It's just fantastic. And there's no evasion to get rid of, so I don't, really don't care. I could trace, but I really don't care. I'm pretty sure all this will die just by me going, Kapow, pow! Kapow! Sorry, I thought that had repeat. I was so confused. Oops. I actually wouldn't pick those. I was just clicking fast because that really buggered, um... That was really dumb of me. <laughs> I wanted to use that uh, that save to come back to it. Now we're going to go through the decks. I uh, I made boo-boo. I was supposed to click on all the shards. Anyway, starting decks. So let's start with Sylvie. Uh, quick shots. Quick shots are beautiful. Quick shots are amazing. The cards we add are set up. We do not want this Vigilance. This Vigilance was a mistake, but I just ran with it. You do not want Vigilance in the deck. You just want more quick shots and multi-shots and camouflages. So this should be a camouflage, but I, I accidentally upgraded it thinking it was Gustav's deck. 
So, uh, whoops, I wasted shards, and so I just kept it in the deck, and it was a mistake. 100%, this should be a camouflage. Camouflage so much better. This was a waste of energy so many times, and I normally didn't cast it. Uh, but the setup really allows for you to pick and choose whether you're playing multi-shot or rapid fire. Rapid fire is for bosses, multi-shot is for the AoE, the folks down. Um... Upgrade everything to zero cost and or to draw because you are trying to be as efficient with your deck as possible. Uh, equipment, no extra equipment, and we'll get to perks in a second. Uh, decks, decks, decks. Gustav, uh, upgrade the chance to be zero cost, bring in a setup, and bring in a trace. Upgrade the vigilances so that, uh, what does the upgrade do? So that they draw? Yep. So what you're doing to do is you, the trace... And the vigilance is starting your hand. You'll trace yourself to make sure that you can find these chants, and then you use the vigilances to draw the chants, and or the setup, which in turn draws the chants, right? So what you're trying to avoid with this trace are these sweet melodies and the song of quickness, because I just didn't have enough uh, shards to replace them with other things. And there's only so much card draw you can add to a deck. You're trying to guarantee on turn one, triple chance of initiative onto Sylvie. Uh, Bree. Uh, dead cards in this are the pommels and the intercepts, and you're trying to add in as much vulnerable sight and mark as possible. So that's intimidates and piercing howl. Also bring in the helping hands because you like to give Sylvie cards. You already start with the battle shout. I probably should have this as the two cost version, but uh, I just can't afford it. So, I mean, that's that's how it works on 9 16, right? We have so many more shards now than we did uh, pre-release, by the way. In early access, so much less shards. Now the perks exist. Having this many shards is fantastic. And then Magnus, uh, let's see, bring in Intimidates and a Piercing Howl, and that complements your Captain's Howl. As you can see, it's all just about that Vulnerable and the Helping Hands to inspire Sylvie. Dead cards right now are all the Fast Strikes and the Intercepts, and honestly, probably one of these Barricades, you're only going to end with one Barricade in the end of the game, and you only ever need this Barricade if, for some reason, uh, Thorns... Uh, this is really great. You want an upgraded... Well, you want one of your barricades to be upgraded. I think I div did a divination is how I have this one. I don't remember. Um, but you want it upgraded for the reinforce so that when Sylvia attacks a thorned target, that thorn's damage is reduced by the piercing resistance of barricade. So on any thorn uh, corruptors or on like, say, tree... Well, no. Tree doesn't take a turn. Never mind. He'll, he'll kill Tree before his turn. But any Thorn Corruptors, you want to make sure you have Barricade with an upgrade on it. Uh, items. Asmodee. Probably one of the best pets because it applies Mark and Slow. And since uh, Magnus, I'm aiming to have him be my fastest character, it's nice to sometimes randomly hit the right enemy to slow them down slower than my team if I don't draw a Howl. You're just trying to stack... Um, contingencies so if i don't draw my howl hopefully the hell mark will hit one of the enemies that i need to slow down or hopefully the other warrior has the slow that kind of thing uh da -da -da, equipment oculi so oculi i chose since magnus has the the most slows i gave him the slow perk and the hell the asmodee pet for the the hell mark and then brie since she has the most Intimidates in her deck, like she starts with two Intimidates and you can craft two more, she has the most Sight going on, so I gave her the Sight perk, and I gave her the Sight pet. Uh, this also is really good at stripping buffer off the enemies, and since Bree is likely to go either first or second, depending on how if I replace her banner or if I get the Forest Crown and stuff, uh, this is really good to strip that buffer and apply some Sight, since she is going to be going heavily into the Sight uh, let's see. And Gustav had no items. Uh, perks. Let's go to perks. So, for Sylvie, uh, speed. We're trying to go ahead of every single enemy other than the Archon, which we have to drag out that fight. Uh, as much shards as possible. And then resistances and gold was just leftovers. Other things you need are starting energy to make that first turn beautiful. Uh, plus mark because that, uh, that target... What a, she has the talent that does mark. That's the only source of mark, really. Other than, I think... Yeah. So, I don't need to dig into this other stuff. I just want that one uh, one point here. Same thing for sight. She has a couple things that give sight, but not enough that I care to uh, 
Like it's just it's just one point, so it's not a big deal. Biggest thing here on this page though is the stealth. You gotta get the extra charges, and charges do more. So instead of you know 40% extra damage, you're doing 50% extra damage or 75% extra damage, depending on your you know stealth charges. Otherwise, we also need this sharp perk that says piercing is 1.5 instead of one. That's really why this she's so strong is because she's double dipping in stealth and sharp, and she has such a beautiful starting deck. Uh, as much pierce as I can get because that's just free damage. Vulnerable. Uh, I have two people applying uh, vulnerable, so they, they both need this plus charges, and the team needs both of these, so Sylvie has to pick one up. Uh, 12 stacks of vulnerable, and vulnerable is more powerful for piercing damage. Go figure. Uh, and then, last but not least, powerful. I actually made a mistake here. I should have gone... I'm kicking myself for this. I should have gone this powerful is 10% per charge instead of 5%, because... I'm never going to turn two other than Archon. And once I'm at Archon, I should be able to maintain at least six stacks of powerful every turn, which is all you need for this to break even. Because at six stacks times 10, that's 60%. Or at 12 stacks times five, that's 60%. So you kind of get the picture of if I can, if I have items that give me six powerful a turn, or even five probably is okay. Six powerful a turn, you break even. Anything above that, you're just doing more damage. So. I could have been that that fight I showed you. I probably could have turned one it if I uh, had this perk. It would have been really close. Uh, and then of course you need an extra card, and that's uh, everything. And like I said, leftovers go here in shards and resistances. The only fight you need resistances really is Archon, and we'll get more into the deck building around Archon. Biggest ones though, Sharp, one point five, powerful. Either one is fine, depending on how you're feeling. 10%, but it disappears at end of turn, or it stacks to 12. And extra cards and extra energy. And then, of course, for a Sylvie team, you need both of these perks, plus anyone applying Vulnerable needs the charges. Yep, yep, yep. Hopefully that was the longest of the perk videos. Uh, Gustav, as you can tell, had extra stuff to spend. Probably if I was smarter, I should have picked up some of these healing talents for Archon, but uh, I wasn't feeling very smart. I probably should have at least gone two points, maybe more, but and at least this regen. I think this regen node and these first two healing points is what I should have done. It's not what I did, but that is such as life. Um, vitality, because I have a vitality song for Archon. This is all Gustav's perks are just really Archon. Uh, extra card for the combos. Vulnerable because the team needs it. Sharp, because Gustav was playing Sharp, and since he had so many extra perks... He was the one that picked up the sharp it cannot be purged option. And then I had so many leftovers, which I probably should have spent a little bit on healing. Like these health ones and maybe some of this gold I should have spent in healing. But since I had all this gold, I was able to buy two pets to begin with, which was actually fairly nice. So I'm not like, I'm not against what I did, but these, these two points at least should have been bare minimum one regen, one heal. Just because that Archon fight, I might have not lost two bodies if I had a little more healing. Uh, and we can get to that in a little bit here. Bree. Uh, sight. She is the main one for Sight. I went Sight charges, not the they disappeared in a turn. Mainly because of Archon fight. Uh, if I was leaning more towards the combo turn one kills, maybe I'd done this one, but that's such a gamble. Uh, and overall, it's really only... Two extra sight per instance than one like because this is one and that's three but then you lose them all on the archon fight so it's probably not worth it oops i didn't mean to click off that she's also playing decent amounts of mark with the intimidates basically you're just picking one card she does and you're playing around it uh it's fast charges because she's going to get a push forward she also had extra stuff so she got a lot of gold uh vulnerable a couple block. I'm not really invested in block because the only card she has that applies block that I kept to the end of the game was her talent card that says draw a card, add block. Like these were honestly probably dead and never, never affected my survival because she only, she, it didn't. I don't really think it affected my survival. Um, both the warriors are picking up sharp because they're getting the sharpen and the grinding wheel to help uh, make sure that Sylvie starts with 50 sharp on turn one. Uh, powerful. Bree will add powerful. Magnus will not. So Bree picks this up and he does not. And then, of course, everyone has the plus cards on the turn one. 
Uh, since I was running uh, Oculi on Bree, I did switch pivot to this one insane point because it only costs one. And like I said, I had extra points. So it's a very small survival increase for the turns that one of the enemies took a turn because they had uh, they're taking they're dealing 0.5 less damage. It's probably not worth it in any way, shape or form, but I was trying it out. I mean, it's a thing. You try to build around what you got. And then, of course, Bree has a shout that adds vitality, so a little extra healing. Both of these were very low impact, but they were also very low cost of just one perk point apiece. Uh, maybe I could have bought some more gold and spent that Gustav's points. What I should have done is those points should have gone here for gold and Gustav's points should have gone towards healing. And I might have survived that Archon fight. Uh, sure, I don't know what that just did. Uh, perks here. Uh, Magnus. He has the Howls, so he gets the Slows. He is doing Intimidate, so he gets Mark. He's doing Intimidate, so he gets Sight. Uh, turn 1 Energy and Turn 1 Cards, because it's Turn 1. He is actually the person providing the most survival to the team uh, for the Archon fight, so he gets as many block charges as possible, and I'm also getting Entrench for the final fight, so I get the Fortify. He's applying Sharp, so he gets Sharp. And uh, yeah, normal shards and survival. As he said, I couldn't get this third point in i couldn't get this one so i got two health ones instead yeah that's all the point perk points let's get into the other decks so quick look at these decks again these are the starting decks i'll just click through them so you can pause them if you want to to look at screenshots and then let's go to act two and i really feel like i'm actually i'm going to uh let me do some save manipulation here i got to i gotta it was really dumb of me to to show that fight and then uh do what i did Give me 10 seconds. Please bear with me. Now is a good time to pause, comment about uh, what you like, dislike, any questions I haven't answered. Uh, so I need Red Town as I talk aloud and speak aloud. And if you didn't know this, um, you can copy save files. I have a video about it. The main reason I do it is for content like this so that I can actually, you know, show you the things as they happen. So deck lists. These are Act 2. So, Sylvie, I'm going to give her most of the boons. At least the ones that... I gave one boon to Gustav because he needed his deck to be more consistent. And Sylvie needed this plus one energy so she could cast more spells. Uh, and then otherwise, I upgraded one of the multi-shots to a volley. And I cut the other rapid fire. And I found another chant of accuracy. Uh, so the nice thing here is that this volley is my big payoff. The multi-shot is really just a backup in case I don't draw the volley. Because even though my deck is fairly consistent, especially if I get a trace from Gustav, I still have a chance to miss if I only have one copy of an AoE attack. So you got to keep two copies of the AoE if you're trying to keep a consistent turn one. Uh, otherwise, feel free to just rely on volleys for your damage. The rapid fire, I probably could have cut it. Uh, I just wasn't sure if I was going to um, need this rapid fire or not. Uh, yep, still got the setup. Nothing really changed here. And, uh, yeah, you really only need two camouflages if your deck is humming. And that's all that changed there. Gustav, I'm trying to make him more consistent. Uh, only way I did that was I replaced one of these melodies with, what, a deflect? I already had the deflect, right? Tune-up. I added tune-up in. That helps, uh, I don't know. More consistency. No, I, I had a boon. That's what I added. I added a boon. I cut one of the songs I wasn't using. Hey, look, the deck's the same. Go figure. Uh, Bree and Magnus, what I really did, what was important this round in Act 2, is I added the Sharpens. They now both have the ability to add Sharp to Sylvie, so she has more consistent turn ones. Uh, defensive Strategy is one of the best cards for Bree. Uh, I found more Intimidates. I upgraded them all to blue because she's about to get her um, talent that reduces the cost of the starting ones. And just in general, she's not spending her energy on much else other than this Battle Shout that I've now upgraded down to two. So since I was able to bring this down to two, I can now bring these up to one. And halfway through this act, I should be able to cast every card she draws. And Powerful and Sight is all she's doing. Still got the Piercing Howl because uh, it's the best card. She's still got a couple dead cards here of Intercepts, but I haven't had anything to replace them with. Uh, Magnus, I've upgraded the second Barricade, so I have more consistency of... If I run into a Thorn Proliferator, I want to be able to make sure I get the Barricade off turn one. Uh, the most consistent Magnus can get with Reinforce is two Barricades. 
Uh, Sunder Armor uh, was a nice pickup for more vulnerable options. Magnus really hasn't gotten many good cards uh, to upgrade his deck, so it's really just the Sharpen, the Upgraded Barricade, and the Sunder Armor. Yep, Equipment. Uh, Wolfskin Cloak was very fantastic, and it goes to Magnus because uh, it's vulnerable and slow. And it only costs zero. Like, this is a good version. He kept this the whole game. There, This was best in slot for him. Uh, Spyglass is nice. Haven't replaced the banner yet, but I'm trying to speed her up and otherwise so that I can replace the banner. Because eventually, I'm going to, if I get a nullifier or something, I want that be able to have the option to remove this without Bree slowing down behind Sylvie. So you got to make sure you speed Bree up a bit. Uh, Gustav, nothing exciting there. As you can see, this looks like a warrior item, right? But uh, warriors would rather have this. <laughs> so, I mean, this was just because I I had it. And it it's not and not serving a function. It doesn't do anything, and I replace it before the end of the game. So, I don't know. Maybe he ends the game with that. Uh, most important item here for Sylvie is the leather gloves. Starting with powerful means that I can more consistently get to 12 on turn 1. I should have been getting to 10 on turn 1, but oops. 12 it is. Elven Quiver is nice. It's honestly only 2 sharp. Uh, for the Archon fight, you can actively be adding sharp to her through the Warriors. So I don't need to keep this for the Archon fight. Uh, I eventually replace it. But until you find something better, you just get what you can you can get. And last but not least, let's go to Act Four. Uh, yes, I'm trying to figure out. I feel like I'm missing something. I had a plan here. I didn't write the plan down. That's usually the mistake you make is not writing plans down. Uh, we have more boons. I have more cards. I'm more than 15 cards because the plan is. So in Act Four, this is the the biggest key thing with playing Manda 16 right now is you have to plan on pivoting from what does well on normal fights to what does well on Archon fight. So on normal fights, these double volleys are fantastic. Uh, I have two of them now, so I can consistently make sure I draw them. I picked up the Poison Sprays because this is my best option for Archon. I have to deal with them and draw past them uh, until I get to the Archon fight. So they're dead cards basically until Archon, which is annoying. But I have to pick them up now in town because... I can't do them later. I, I, I found one in the last act, and I crafted one now. That's why I have two. Um, but they're dead cards until I get to Archon, really. And once, right before I get to Archon, for the last spot where you remove cards, I want to make sure I remove both these volleys, or at least one of them, so that I uh, don't draw them in the Archon fight, because they're, they're useless there. So what you do is you got to make sure you're above 17, 15 cards, so that you know you have space to remove a card. So 16 is probably a safe way to go here. So I can at least remove one. But I couldn't think of like... I need a final five cards for Archon. So that's two quick shots, two poison sprays. And nothing. Like if I'm cutting these volleys, I only have four cards. So I have, I have to find more cards for Sylvie before the Archon fight. Because even with the sadnesses that they add, odds are I'm drawing six or seven cards. So I need to find ways to fill that up. So right now I have only six cards that don't vanish. I plan on cutting one or two of them. So depending on what cards I get throughout this Act 4 is how I have to craft my, my Archon deck. And so in Act 4 Town, you got to make sure you craft everything you need for Archon and have a plan so that when you get to the final church and the final altar, you modify your deck so that it's ready for that fight. I dropped down one of the camouflages because I have a Super Vanish. The Super Vanish is super fantastic. Mm. Tasty. Beautiful. And, uh, yeah, nothing really unusual here. Uh, I don't have as many quick shots anymore because I don't have a bow that draws me cards. If I had a bow that draws me cards, I'd make sure I, I probably kept, like, a 19 card deck or maybe an 18 and kept some more quick shots. But, uh, alas, that is not the case, so I have to plan to what I drew. Speaking of items, I mean, this Runic Dice is a nice pickup because it's two damage. There are better options. Lava Coil is nice, but uh, I'd rather have a Power Coil. Dark Hood's actually fairly good because of the stealth. Archon Fight is not as good because I don't plan on re-stealthing in the Archon Fight too many times. And I don't have a bow, but I do at least have plus three piercing damage. Uh, hero deck. Gustav. Gustav has to prepare for healing the team in the final fight. So I make sure I pick up this Healing Serenade. It's something I have to draw past on all the fights up to that. I'm keeping the Encore as just another chant of accuracy. And the Song of Quickness, I'm still keeping it for the, uh, uh, what are they called? 
the corruptors where or the the normal fights where i have to speed up sylvie past one of the enemies like if i miss a slow or they're immune to slow or they have the upwind stuff like that if for some reason i need to speed her up i want to keep this and then i plan on at the archon fight getting rid of it which is why i'm at 16 cards so that i can delete this for the archon fight because it's just well actually it vanishes it's not a big deal i could live with it uh maybe oh, i'm at 16 cards because i have two boons and i have four deflects so i basically have six boons and every other card i need uh for the fight so if anything i probably could add one more healing spell but with my equipment here i have this this super fancy flute where i'm reducing the songs by one so the idea is i'm just going to cycle this healing serenade several times i've Hopefully, I have it start in my hand. I reduce the cost to zero over the course of several turns. And I cast it for zero. I deflect to draw it. I cast it for one. I deflect to draw it. I cast it for two. Etc. 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 Um, I guess we could look at talents here in a second, too. I didn't do that. Uh, everything you'd expect. And I'm going to pick up Eternal Bond so my pet stays alive. Gustav just going down the right side. I'm going to... I don't think I went wide sleeves. Yeah, I didn't go wide sleeves. I just went choir. They both kind of suck for Archon. Uh, Bree down the right side and Magnus down the right side. Bree Hero Deck. I apologize for going kind of long, but uh, I hear people like to know these things. So for those still interested, glad you're here. Bree, you got to make sure you craft a battle plan in this town because uh, if you happen to come across a fountain pen, you want a book. And this is a book. Also, it's just really good for digging through your opening hand to make sure you get defensive strategy so that you can cast all your spells on turn one. Because if you have enough enrages and battle plans and defensive strategy, you can you can play every single turn card turn one. And I have a grinding wheel that I think I crafted. I don't know if I was able to afford it. If I did, I... I... Grinding wheel is fantastic. Bree's the best one to have it because all her skills cost less, so she has extra energy. And Magnus is going to use his energy for survival in the Archon fight. So Bree's the only one that can afford to spend the energy on the sharp. And her final deck for Archon is going to be Helping Hands, uh, Battle Shout, and Battle Plan. Oh, and these sharpens. The goal is to remove one of these sharpens in the, the final camp before Archon, uh, hoping to get a card I can use so I can replace that. Magnus is the Howlmeister. He is basically guaranteed to draw a slow on turn one, so he, I want to make sure he is the fastest and that he slows down all the enemies. For the Archon fight, you got to pick up the Entrench and the Push Forward. Uh, I didn't put the Push Forward on Bree because even though it's a skill, uh, if you recall, I did not give her any of the block. <laughs> so she's just she's just here to uh, sharpen Vulnerable. That's I mean sharpen sharpen Sight, and then later she's just here for Helping Hands. Hey guys, I, I hear you're sad. Cheer up. She's just the one, the cheerleader there in the final fight to get rid of the sads. Uh, on the team and uh yeah carnage is the archon equivalent of vulnerable stacking because you have to have a non-vanished version of vulnerable and all the good vulnerables vanish because that's how it is uh equipment magnus you're guaranteed the venom fang by going to the spider lair so vulnerable charges yes please i was lucky enough to pick up the proficient i gave it to magnus because i want to guarantee the howls because uh, they're stronger than the Intimidates. And uh, War Banner is a great pickup. I always love that card. All Seeing Amulet because she's got both Oculi and lots of Intimidates. So lots of Sight Charges. Scryer Staff was a dumb pickup. Like, I didn't have a better choice. But I forgot that Burn was nerfed so hard. I thought this was going to increase it. Like, I thought this was going to be noticeable damage on the Archon fight. It was not. It was not at all. It, it, was, it was a waste of my time. I'd rather have like 30 gold. Um, uh, and yeah, I feel like I talked about everything. I think I talked like a lot. Um, I'm going to spend like 10 seconds here to make sure I didn't forget anything. Biggest thing, craft what you need for the Archon fight in the town act for town and plan on cutting the things you don't need for the Archon fight because Archon fight be annoying. Yes, please. As we know, there's two games to play non Archon and Archon. And, uh, yeah. That's the team comp. It, it's pretty straightforward. As I said earlier, the combats are like, I'll just, I'll just do another combat here. Sure. 
Now that we talked about all this stuff, he went before me. That's unfortunate. It happens sometimes because I was not, as you see, I don't have a forest crown. If, if I had a forest crown, it would have been on Magnus and Magnus would have gone first and he would have howled down the enemies, prioritized the howls. Uh, I checked to see if I need to speed up Sylvie. If I do to get pad ahead of one of these guys, I use push forward. If not, I will sharpen her, give her a hand and carnage out some more vulnerable. Gustav, me man. I'm just drawing my chance of initiative. I, I didn't draw all of them, so I'll tune up to draw the last one. Sorry, chance of accuracy. I'm used to chance of initiative. On, uh, sure, just, like, I don't need healing, but just for, uh, muscle memory. I practice, you know, cast that first. Do all your chance of accuracy. And, hey, look, I even have energy for this heal, which I don't need. Do, 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 do. Bree, draw first. Do your... So if you have a, a a setup or a battle plan, you want to do this one after your other draws. So I do this draw first. I'm out of draws. I go to the battle plan. I'm looking for the defensive strategy. I found it. I need to... I don't want to put back anything that's had its cost reduced because then its cost will get unreduced. So then I defensive strategy and I pick what I need. Um, I need... I don't remember what I put back. I need to make sure I get uh, a bunch more powerful on her. She's going to get uh, four more, five more on her turn. So eight. So I only need to cast one of these. So I might not cast that shout if I draw enough other cards. Helping hands. Ooh, draw. Sharpen. See, I only need this for the powerful. So since this does powerful as well, I'll just do that. I have enough energy anyway to cast everything. And now I look through here and I find who's got the most sharp resist. She's the elite and has the negative sharp, so she's fine. It's these front and third. I should have done it on the third one because he's got four evasion. That's actually... I don't remember if I go to turn two on this fight. I don't remember doing so, but... Uh, I think I'm going to put the target shooting on this guy since he's got evasion. Uh, I'm going to manage my draws and see what I see. I need two adrenalines, a chant, a double shot. And I already have a volley, so I need these four cards. So I've got a couple setups. So if you've got two setups, do one first. Just kind of take a look at everything here. Uh, da, 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 put some stuff back. So I could probably use this camouflage as a card draw. So I put these two back. I use the... I do the adrenaline, I do the chance on myself, I do the camouflage as a card draw because I don't need it as the stealth because I have the vanish. So I dug one deeper, I'm at a card draw, I do the setup. And now these are the last cards I have options. So I have six, seven, eight energy. So uh, seven, eight energy. So if I put these two back, I'll be able to cast everything I have here. Uh, adrenaline, vanish volley. volley again this guy is annoying but i think he is still dead skis because i gave him that super negative resistances because he had evasion and that is honestly the most straightforward combo you can ever have like this team is super straightforward it uh it does that every time if you're a little less efficient just uh you'll go to turn two and you just add a little more defensive stuff like you actually give heal talents to your bard you give block talents to your your other warrior and maybe give them some block cards you really don't with magnus like magnus is my main uh shield so i really don't need the shield on Bree, but maybe Bree does some more shouts that have vitality or something on it you know what i mean like yeah just a little more survivability in case you get that turn one a couple guys survive turn one and then uh, you just go to turn two and then sylvie's like eventually she'll get to what i just did on any later turn so you, you'll just do it on a later turn i'm done babbling i think i've talked way much longer than i wanted to but hopefully this was helpful uh if you still have questions on this run please let me know i'll see about answering those or doing another video i am going to get back to character guides next so uh i will catch you later peace